Alright, phase one SMR self mount fascia release. We are going to be using a med ball, a lacrosse ball or a baseball, and a Theracane. All these products are super easily accessible on Amazon for not too much money. Now I like using the med ball, especially as the start, because maybe those other two tools attack very specific areas rather than the whole muscle. So when we first start these things, the area of concern might be much larger, which means we can get at it with the med ball and it might be more effective than just going through all of that fascia with a lacrosse ball or a baseball. Now fascia is our connective tissue. Think about a spider web connecting all of the parts of our body. Also think about an orange. When you peel an orange, all the juice does not fall out. Why? It's because of all those pockets of fascia in the orange. We can think about the fascia in our body acting in a similar way of holding everything together. It's also a good way of visualizing how our entire body is connected and nothing works in isolation. You can also think of fascia as just a way more stubborn version of a muscle, which means you can train it the same way. It just needs a lot more time and a lot more consistency. And then the third property of fascia that we want to talk about is that it is deeply connected to the nervous system, especially when we talk about pain signals going to the brain. So these fascial adhesions that we are going to address with, with SMR are going to help our nervous system a lot too throughout this process. So why do we do this? Because dysfunction in our body and our posture and in the way we move leads to muscular imbalances. So now overworked muscles work inefficiently, which causes pain and suffering. Now in chronic use will lead to fascial adhesions. When these fascial adhesions tighten up and tighten up, they calcify, they dry out. It makes it harder for our body to deliver nutrients to that area. That leads to more imbalances, that leads to more compensation, which means more dysfunction. Tips for SMR, use a ground surface for good feedback. Basically, you don't wanna do it on a super soft rug, because then what you're trying to do while you're laying on the lacrosse ball or the medicine ball, the feedback from the ground will be disrupted. You won't get the same benefit. The second one, the most important, go into the darkness and then breathe. Basically, our nervous system is designed to avoid things that don't make us feel safe. And part of this rehab process is addressing those pain signals that make us feel unsafe. So what I mean by this is when you lay on the lacrosse ball, it doesn't matter what body part you choose. Your job is to explore and find those areas that jump out at you and almost send you a panic signal of like, no, do not go here. That's the darkness. Those signals mean we probably have to explore that area more. So what's going to happen if we are in that panic mode or the stress state, the sympathetic nervous response, we are going to have to breathe our way through that and tell your body and tell your nervous system that it is safe to proceed. And what's going to happen is your body is going to accept what's going on and mold itself around that lacrosse ball or medicine ball. And that is how you get the trigger point release. That melting around the trigger point is the fascia opening up and allowing you to get deeper into those layers, which then leads to the hydration. That is gonna make us feel good. My rule of thumb is the more pain that you go through in these exercises, the less pain that you have to deal with in real life. And obviously there are certain areas of your body where you don't want to do that but I'm talking about the muscle groups that we'll go over. The second part of this is you have to be subtle at first. You cannot just dive straight in because your body's gonna avoid it and you're not gonna be able to give it time to adapt to that, to what is going on. So when you're searching for those fascial adhesions, you're basically knocking on a bunch of doors being like, who is home? Then there's gonna be somebody that's like, no, do not come in here. That is the spot that you have to, that you have to eventually go in, but I'm not telling you to kick down the door. I'm telling you to gently open the door let them know that it's all right, that you're coming in and everything's going to be good. And then spend two to five minutes each spot. And again, start subtly and then breathe your way into this. But remember that a fascia is going to be stubborn. These dysfunctions have likely lasted a long time in our bodies. So it might take a long time to get rid of them. And the last part, this is a process of hydration. So you're going to have to drink a lot of water while you're doing these things. My suggested sequence is everything starts with our anterior pelvic tilt that leads to tight hip flexors. So you want to get the rectus femoris and the hip flexor complex first. When this happens, it inhibits the glutes. If the glutes don't work, you're going to have a tight IT band, a tight TFL and upper and outer glutes. So you hit those next. Also because of the sitting posture, because of our poor movement mechanics, you got compressed ribs that leads to tight upper abs that inhibits the deep core muscles, which means we get tight pecs. And then thirdly, dysfunctional core and hips. If you can't feel your body moving through space and control it with your core and your hips, 
then the feet and the calves are going to have to work a lot harder on each step. We step the most, so feet and calves. This would be the suggested sequence for phase one.